Hi, this is George coming to you from Nautilus Mission Control at the University of Rhode Island's Inner Space Center. And we've got Black Sea Leg Chief Scientist Mike Brennan with us today. Mike is aboard Nautilus, which has left the Black Sea and is in the uh, Mediterranean on her way to the Anaximander mountain range. Mike, in the Black Sea, we did three basic things. We took some sediment cores, we recovered part of a five-year-old experiment, and we also, of course, encountered some shipwrecks. Let's start with the wrecks. What did we find? Uh, we found three uh, shipwrecks this year. Two were uh, fairly degraded wooden shipwrecks that had been trawled uh, fairly heavily by bottom trawl fishers. Uh, so there were a lot of wooden timbers that were scattered over the seabed. Uh, there weren't a lot of ceramic artifacts uh, there, uh, probably because they weren't cargo ships, but they were uh, wooden vessels that had uh, partially been destroyed by trawlers. And then we found a Regley G, which was a large schooner, probably with two masts, that was very well intact. We think it sank between 1850 and, and uh, early 1900s. And uh, there were also trawl nets hanging over it, but it was a large enough site that they didn't destroy it. Uh, so it's well preserved. We could see a lot of the uh, shipbuilding techniques because uh, of the wood preservation from the anoxic layer. So that was a very large target. Uh, so we conducted a multi-beam map of it and, uh, and, and did two dives on it to, to document that particular shipwreck. So now let's move on to the sediment core samples. Tell us a bit about those. Sure. We started sediment core sampling uh, in 2007, actually, around uh, Sinope D, which is a wreck site in the anoxic layer. We took more sediment cores last year uh, on our Black Sea expedition uh, off of Sinope as well. Uh, and these were conducted in the oxic, suboxic, and anoxic layers uh, to look at differences in geochemistry, microbiology, and mayofauna uh, organisms in these cores to see if we can see differences in the chemistry and biological activity uh, between these three different layers. Uh, this this year, uh, we did a similar replicate set uh, just east of Sinope, whereas last year was west of Sinope. The really interesting thing about the area east of Sinope is that there's this uh, old horizon that has uh, bioturbated sediments where uh, organisms such as worms have been moving up and down in the sediment stratigraphy, um, kind of making it all one sort of deposit. Uh, and that's overlain by anoxic sediments, which are very thin stratifications in the sediment because there's no organisms burrowing around in there. And so finding uh, bioturbated sediments underlain by anoxic sediments uh, tells us that the that area that was at 190 meters depth used to be oxygenated waters when it was an ocean environment, and now it's anoxic. So that told, tells us that the anoxic layer once rose. So uh, we have more work to do to, to determine uh, what the geochemistry and biology of, of that particular layer looks like and see if we can support that. So let's move on now to the experiment recovery. We started that experiment in 2007. Can you talk about a bit about what it was meant to achieve? Sure. Our uh, conservator in 2007, whose uh, name is Dennis Piotta, he works at UMass Boston, uh, um, he's been uh, Dr. Ballard's conservator for deep water artifacts um, since the, the 80s and 90s when they worked at Skirky Bank. He developed a series of experiments called that he dubbed Twinkies and Kebabs that are a series of uh, materials such as wood and metals that could be deposited in a sequence of sets on the seabed next to Sin the Sinop D shipwreck uh, that we would recover at set intervals so that we could see how the anoxic waters affect the decay and re redox of certain materials. So we had pine, oak, uh, copper, lead, steel, and bone and rawhide uh, to, to act as um, proxies for um, skin and, and bone. Uh, we recovered them uh, last week and Dennis shipped these back to Boston where he's going to be analyzing them in his lab uh, and we're really excited to see what the uh, first step after five years what these look like uh, both with all of the materials and also with depth in the sediment um, and then you know hopefully in another five years or so we'll be able to come back and add a second set of data to this first set. All right Mike well thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah thanks very much. For those of you watching at home, be sure to follow on Facebook and Twitter for more news. And of course, you can always join the expedition live right here at NautilusLive.org.